Hello and welcome to another episode of Second Hand Stories. This is a place where I tell you stories. What kind? Well, histories, mysteries and unbelievable stories. Today's episode of course is uh, an episode titled Spooky Stories from Around the World and true to its title that's what you're going to get these are stories taken from a lot of different places from around the world and the one thing that they have in common is that they are in some way or shape or form spine tingling and scare inducing now do i believe in ghosts not entirely do i like the feeling of being afraid strangely yes it's an odd thing but it's thrilling in its own way i'm assuming that if you're watching this you have that same tendency so without any further ado let's begin Our first story takes us to Japan and we're going to meet a malicious spirit called the Kuchisake Ona. Now this name literally translates to slit-faced woman or slit-mouthed woman. And the name comes from the back story of this particular spirit. The back story is this. There was once a couple who were married, they were relatively happy until the husband finds out that his wife was cheating on him when he finds this news out he flips in anger in rage he ends up murdering his wife but not before he carves her mouth open from ear to ear and that is the origin of the kuchisake ona the slit mouthed woman Now the appearance of the Kuchisake Ona is described according to legend like this she appears wearing a surgical mask and she usually wears either a brown coat or a white kimono which has these red spider lily patterns on them of course the red is formed by splotches of blood she usually appears carrying a sharp object it's either a knife or a pair of scissors now she will meet you if you are walking alone in an isolated stretch in the night and when she appears in front of you she will ask you a question the question is am i beautiful if you answer no she will kill you instantly if however you say yes she will take off her surgical mask revealing her carved up mouth and she'll smile baring her sharp teeth and she'll say how about now now if you say no she will immediately dismember you However, if you say yes, she will still kill you, but not before. She makes you as beautiful as she is by carving your mouth from ear to ear. Basically, there is no right answer with the Kuchisake Ona. She is quite possibly the worst person to have taking your viva. But If you meet her say your prayers because you're not going to get out of it alive. Our next story takes us to Mexico and in Mexico there's a lake called Lake Xochimilco. So Lake Xochimilco is interesting because it has these artificial man-made islands on it. 
okay these islands were made way back in the day by the aztecs which were of course the ancient civilization that used to call mexico home now they've made these artificial islands as places where they would do agriculture this lake is rather shallow and they've taken the sediment and put it onto these artificial islands where they used to grow crops now the lake has a lot of canals and these canals are connecting all these islands and you can get around on these canals on boats called trajineras now if you take a particular trajinera and you ask to go to this one particular island a particular island called las islas de las muñecas this particular island translates to the island of dolls your boatman will take you to this place and it's an acre large island what's interesting and creepy about this place is that every inch of this island is filled with dolls they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and they are hung from trees across this island on all the trees and all the places where you could nail a doll to you will find a doll these dolls are in disrepair they are old they are ancient they are dirty some of them are broken some of them only have a head some of them are missing a head and you only see a torso and their legs it's an inherently unbelievably creepy place and what makes it creepier is the story behind the island of dolls now the story is this in 1950 there was a man called don julian santana barrera now this man was forced out of his neighborhood because of some extreme views he held and he was forced out onto these artificial islands on the lake zoshi milko now he's living on this island isolated almost like a hermit he's got a hut and he grows a few vegetables to sustain himself one day something extremely tragic happens he sees that there is a body floating in the canal outside his island this body is of a little girl and she is drowned next to her is a doll according to legend this girl was playing in the lake with her friends and the current drifted her away and she ended up drowned and in front of Julian Santana Barrera's island he fishes her out but of course it's too late pretty soon after this gruesome discovery odd things start happening on this island to Julian Santana Barrera he starts hearing voices he starts seeing these shadowy figures and his luck turns sour one day he wakes up and he sees that all his vegetables that he was growing on this island they've suddenly failed now he believes that whatever is happening is happening because of the spirit of the girl that he had found in the canal so to appease her spirit he takes the doll that he had found beside her and he hangs it from a tree this would begin an obsession an obsession that would last the next 50 something years almost to appease the spirit he kept collecting dolls and hanging them all over the island he would find dolls in the canals he would find them in the trash in the city bring them back and hang them or nail them to places in this island over the years you can imagine how many dolls he had put up on this one particular island on lake soshi milko what's more obviously is that these dolls weren't just innocent dolls they were also creepy in their own way julian santana barrera would often say that he could hear the dolls whispering to each other he would often say that they gave him company as well the creepiest part about this whole thing is that in 2001 julian santana barrera was found dead he was found dead drowned in the canal at the exact same spot where he had found the girl soon after that the island became some kind of tourist trap 
the boatmen would take people to this island for a fee and show them this unique, creepy, crazy place. A lot of visitors would often report the same thing, that they would report that they could hear dolls talking to each other. Some would say that they could see the heads of these dolls turning as if to follow them, or their eyes would open up and look at them. We don't know whether this place is actually haunted or it's just a legend that sprung up from an eccentric man living alone on this one particular island on Lake Zoshimilko. What is undeniably creepy though is that there is this island that's filled with these dolls that are tattered, ratty, dirty, old and it just takes the joy that was supposed to be given by these toys away from them and replaces them with something that seems very close to sinister. Our next story takes us to New Zealand and 30 minutes south of Auckland, there is a place called Karaka and in this place, you will find a sprawling building called the King Seat Hospital. Like in every classic ghost story, this hospital used to be a former psychiatric hospital. It used to run between the years of 1939 and 1959. It's a huge place and it used to have a maximum security wing and a morgue on site. Now soon after the place shut down, a lot of people, former patients came forward alleging mistreatment and abuse while they were there in this hospital. Most notably they said that the worst of this abuse and mistreatment took place between the decades of 1960s and the 1970s. The stories they came forward with were pretty awful, gruesome. They claimed that they were beaten up, physically abused, and often they were prescribed drugs that they were not supposed to be taking as punishment. Now, it's not just that. This place was notorious for a lot of sinister things happening. For example, two patients went missing, disappeared from this place. A lot of patients used to feel fearful when their families would meet them and they would urge them to take them away from this hospital. The worst case obviously was the case of a young boy, an 11 year old called Clement Matthews. Now Clement Matthews died in this hospital and his official cause of death was pneumonia. However, the police would reopen his case after a witness came forward decades later with a story that told a different version of what happened to Clement Matthews. Now the witness was a friend of Matthews and he says that he saw his friend Clement Matthews being beaten up by hospital staff. The boy was thrown to the ground and brutally kicked. He was kicked so hard that the witness heard his back break. He described it like it was hearing a branch snapping. He said that his friend died like a dog. Now you can imagine just through this anecdote how bad conditions were in this hospital. And it wasn't just bad for the patients, it was also awful for the staff. A lot of staff took their lives at this place. In fact, in the old nurses quarters, there is an apparition that appears called the Grey Nurse. The Grey Nurse was a former nurse who had ended their life at the old nurse's quarters. There was one particular visitor who had come to King Seat Hospital and had happened to touch a bathtub. And when they did, they claimed that they saw a vision. The vision was of a woman in this bathtub who was being held down into the water. In this vision, the person could see the hands and arms flailing as this woman struggled for life and a hand holding her down, drowning her. Now, in addition to this, 
other visitors have also felt other things they felt these cold spots they felt dizzy and nauseous while being in the place and what's more they've also seen objects moving and being manipulated this hospital today very oddly and fittingly is being run as a horror theme park which i guess makes sense because you don't have to work too hard to make this place seem creepy For our next story, before I tell you the story, I want to show you something. Here is what I want to show you. Now, this is a painting that was made by an artist from Ukraine called Svetlana Telets. The name of this painting is the Rain Woman. Now, when I saw this painting for the first time, I saw it on my laptop and I cannot tell you how much I had this urge to scroll past this image. It's just something about it that it gives me this low level panic. Uh, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's just this, you know, the way her features are elongated, the way the rain is just pouring off that hat or if you can see this mist that almost looks like it's severing her head at the neck. It's just something about this painting that just gives me the creeps. And when you hear the story of this painting, you will realize that it's far creepier than it looks. Here's the history of this particular painting. Now, the painting was made by Svetlana Telets very soon after she graduated from art school. Now, around the time that she made this painting, she said that she constantly had this feeling like she was being watched. It was a feeling that she kept having and she tried to push it away, but it would keep coming back. Then one day, it was raining outside. It was a bleak morning where it's cloudy and it's rainy. And she's sitting in front of her canvas, wondering what to draw and paint. Suddenly, she gets this vision. She sees this woman in vivid detail. She can see the colors, the contours, everything. And she begins painting. Now she would paint in, in a feverish fashion for the next five hours. And at some point, she says, it almost felt like she wasn't even in control of her hand. At the end of these five hours, this painting would be ready. And after that, it would have a history that's as unsettling as this painting looks. Now, the first person to buy this painting was a woman who bought it and put it up in her bedroom. And two weeks later, Svetlana Telets gets a phone call. The call comes very late at night. When she picks up the phone, it's the woman who's bought the painting. And she's pleading and begging. She says, please take this painting back. Ever since I've got this painting in my house, I can't sleep. I constantly feel like there's someone in the room in my apartment beside me. She says, just take it back. I've, I've hidden it behind a cupboard and yet I can't shake this feeling off. So the painting is returned. The second person to buy this painting was a man who bought it and he returns it too. And he returns it without even asking for his money back. He says that he kept dreaming of this woman and then he started seeing this shadowy form walking around in his room. A shadowy form that looked eerily like the woman from the painting. He says that he was being driven mad by this work of art and he's extremely afraid of it. So the painting comes back. The painting goes out a third time to another man who is skeptical. He doesn't believe these stories. He buys the painting. But even he would end up returning it. He would say that he could constantly see the eyes of this painting 
following him and like every time he was in the room with this painting he used to keep getting headaches like intense headaches and he couldn't take it anymore and he wants to return the painting in 2008 the painting was sold again this time to a man called sergey stachkov now this person was a musician in a band and he buys it puts it up in his house and as soon as he puts it up things start going sideways in his house he starts having fights with his wife things start breaking in his house and what's more the wife complains that she can hear someone walking around in the house when this musician goes on tour the wife promptly takes the painting down and hides it far away from the house now people say that the painting is cursed it's some kind of unholy item but the painter herself disagrees she says that every painting is made for someone and though this painting may not be for everyone considering how odd it looks and how there is an element of grief that hangs on this painting she does think that there is someone out there who may be looking for this painting just as this woman is looking for them So those are the stories from this episode. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did, then please leave a like and a comment. If you have other creepy stories that you would like me to cover, please feel free to write them in the comment section below. Just two more things that I have to tell you. Number 1 is this YouTube is a very big place and content gets lost all the time. So in case you would like to be updated on all future episodes of Second Hand Stories, then do consider hitting the bell icon. It genuinely lets you know and it just helps in general. Uh the second thing that I have to tell you is that every single episode of Second Hand Stories is shot in front of a live audience. They are absolutely alive 100% unless I've been pranked in some odd way um now if you would like to be a part of these live recordings all you have to do is become a member of the channel members obviously get to come for these live recordings and pretty soon they will also get extra bonus content and episodes i don't know if episodes are content or content are episodes but they will get that all right uh that's it from this episode i hope you enjoyed it until next time take care and bye bye <laughs>